My name is Rachel. I'm a park interpreter with Santa Clara County Parks. And as a park interpreter, it's my job to share the historical, cultural, and natural resource stories of our parks with visitors and community members. So this is our third video for the Play Like a Minor video series. And this time we are going live. So we're so glad you can join us today. If you'd like to see the other Play Like a Minor videos, you can see them at the Santa Clara County Parks website. And then you'll navigate to the Almond Inn Quicksilver Mining Museum page. So you can see our videos here. You can also download the Play Like a Minor activity booklet. We'll be doing the Koki Mining activity today in this program, so you can follow us along. If you don't have the booklet just yet, that's okay. You can still download it on the same page, the Almond Inn Quicksilver Mining Museum page. And once you finish the activity booklet and you write down two code words, you can win a prize along with other goodies. So make sure you stay tuned for the code word that I'll say at the end of this program. Um, if you have any questions during this program, make sure you type them in into the question and answer box in Zoom, and we'll make sure to answer your questions. If you have any comments as well, make sure to type them in into the chat. Um, if you want to see this presentation and our faces at the same time, you can do that by scrolling up in your Zoom window. There should be a small box that says View Options. You'll click the arrow to the right, and then you'll choose the side-by-side -side view option. So now we're going to get started with our great chocolate chip cookie mining competition. Mm. I'll go ahead and pass it over to Linda, who's going to set the scene for our competition. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Welcome, everybody, to the great chocolate chip cookie mining competition. We are so happy to have you here today. And welcome to beautiful Cookie Valley. It's a perfect sunny day here. The sky is blue, butterflies are fluttering. We are here amongst the rare chocolate chip mountains. The chocolate chips in the mountains of Cookie Valley, Valley are very valuable. Chocolate chips are mined and melted into a sugary liquid that produces electricity. And we use that electricity to power our cars, homes, and buildings in Cookie Valley. The smell of melted chocolate chips creates the sweet aroma that Cookie Valley is known for. We'll follow the Milk River up to the Sugar Mining Company's mining site. Today, two miners from the Sugar Mining Company will compete to find as many chocolate chips as they can. The more chips the miners extract, the more money the mining companies make, and the more electricity we have in Cookie Valley. Because these miners are working in beautiful Cookie Valley, miners have to be careful. If they do too much damage to the land, the company will have to pay reclamation costs. That's money that we have to pay to restore the land to a natural or usable state. While you might think that the miners are going to have all the fun, you will get to choose the miner you think will find the most chocolate chips and make the most money. You can cheer them on at home. Let's meet our two miners who will compete in the great cookie mining competition. <laughs> I'm a new miner at the Sugar Mining Company. I might be a rookie, but I know how to mine cookies. Sugar runs through my veins. My father and his father were both miners in nearby Oatmeal Raisin Hills. Unlike my ancestors, I have the need for speed. My secret? I eat lots of sugar before the start of my workday, so I have a lot of energy throughout the day. I use toothpicks to mine chocolate chips. They are the newest mining tool. They're lightweight, so I can mine fast. Once I get that prize money, I'm going to buy my own place at the Milk Carton Apartments that overlook Milk River. It's gonna be so sweet. I've been working with the sugar mining company for many years. I'm a veteran. I know the ins and outs of chocolate chip mining. These young miners may be quick, but they are sloppy. Their reclamation costs are always high, and don't get me started with their cravings for sugar. My motto is, a good job takes time. I use the traditional tools of paper clips. They are sturdy and reliable. Chocolate chips that I find are the best quality, and I'm careful not to damage the land. 
I want to make sure that we can enjoy the mountains of Cookie Valley even after mining operations have ended. What will I do with the prize money? I'm going to take a trip to Macaroon Islands. I've heard it's beautiful this time of year. All right, now that you've met our two competitors, you get to choose which miner you think will find the most chocolate chips and make the most money. Victoria is going to launch a poll for you to choose. It's up on your screen now. So please choose Ray or Vic. Ooh, coming in strong. Ooh, we're now tied up. Oh, it's going back and forth. Ray the rookie's getting ahead. Oh, will there be an upset? All right, we've got 22 out of 24 people who have chosen their minor they're going to root for. We'll give it three more seconds, and then we're going to close this poll. All right, so you can see from the results, most people are betting on our rookie, Ray. All right, let's give them both a good shout out, and we will get started. So first, we have to explain the rules. So each miner will start with $20. Vic has a piece of land. She had to pay $9 for her land and her tools, those lovely dependable paper clips, those cost her $6. This leaves her with $5. She has to find more than six chocolate chips to make a profit. Ray also has land worth $9 and her lightweight tools only cost her $4. So Ray has $7 left over and she only needs to find five chocolate chips to make her profit. Our miners will have 90 seconds, a minute and a half to extract as many chocolate chips as they can from their cookie. Once they're done mining, we will see if the miners were careful with the land. Remember any kind of damage to the land, they have to restore and reclaim it. So if they cause too much damage, they could eat into their profits. All right. Okay, miners, are you ready with your tools? All right, on your marks, get set and mine. Look at Ray go. Will this fast and bold mining technique yield the chocolate chips that Ray needs? Vic, on the other hand, prefers a slow and precise method. Look how carefully she's chipping away at her cookie. An advantage to Vic's technique is how little damage she's doing to her cookie mining area. There are very few crumbs being made, but will her careful mining yield enough chocolate chips to make a profit? Ray is quickly decimating and destroying her landscape. I think she won't have any problems gathering enough chocolate chips, but how much will Ray have to pay back in reclamation costs? At $1 a square, reclamation costs don't seem like much, but as the cookie crumbles, the costs add up. It looks like Vic has been able to extract a fair number of chips by precisely targeting prime chip areas. Remember, Vic has years more experience mining than Ray, and while Ray may have a boost from all that sugar, will her speed make up for the fact that there just isn't much left of that cookie? All right, miners, we are down to our last nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tools down. Great job, miners. So, as you can see, there's quite a difference in how our miners have decided to get through and create those chocolate chips. So, while they figure out how many chips they have um, needed, I'm going to ask a few questions. So, 
after you saw the results, do you think you still want to stick with your minors or would you like to switch over to good old Vic? You can always answer me in the chat. And then did you notice if they had different techniques? Someone says I'm switching. Someone says I'm sticking. Oh, we're sticking with Ray. Oh, nope. Someone says Vic all the way. Nope, we're sticking with our pick. All right. So if you notice, they did have some different techniques in their mining. What did you notice about the difference between Vic and Ray's mining techniques? All right. I've just got the number of chips and the number of land the amount of land that they've reclaimed so i'm going to turn it over to ray she's going to give us a little bit of a presentation on mining and new alma den all righty so while we wait for our competition results i'm going to talk about a real mining operation that occurred at what is now the alma den quicksilver county park and they actually mined, not for chocolate chips, but for a rock called cinnabar that was then processed to get mercury. And when you think about mining, you might think of work that was done a long time ago, but we still mine a lot today. But why do we mine? So we mine to get materials that are used to make different things. We mine for minerals, which are the building blocks of rocks. Some minerals contain metals like silver, gold, or mercury. For fun, if you want to see the minerals around your own house, you can use the scavenger hunt in the Play Like a Miner activity booklet. So we mined to get things um, that are deep in the earth. If something isn't grown, so if it doesn't come from a plant or an animal, it has to be mined. I'll give you a quick moment to look at your immediate surroundings if you're in your room or if you're at your kitchen table and look at the objects around you and see if they come from a mine. You can type in the chat what objects you're looking at. So you're probably seeing a lot of electronics. And that is true, a lot of electronics, parts of it come from mine materials. But we also have cars, freeways, buildings, and our computers because of mining. If you look at your computer, there are about 66 different mine materials to make it. That's a lot of stuff. Um, one material that is common in your computer and a lot of other electronics is copper. So you can see in this image, this is the Bingen Canyon copper mine in Utah. This is the largest um, an oldest mine in the world. And in this picture, you might see small little dots in the road. I want you to type in the chat what you think these small dots are. So if you typed in the chat truck or haul truck, you are correct. Those very small dots in that picture were these huge haul trucks used to transport the copper. That gives you some perspective on how big this mining operation is. So the Bingham Canyon copper mine is just one example of a historic mining operation in the United States. But there is another historic mining operation that is closer to home if you are tuning in from the San Francisco Bay, and that is the New Almondon Mines in South San Jose, California. Mining took place at New Almondon for over 130 years. That's a long time. Now you might be wondering what New Almondon means. So Almondon means the mine in Arabic. And there was a mine in Spain that controlled mercury at the time, and that was called Almondon. So when mercury was discovered here in San Jose, they called it New Almondon or the new mine. So New Almondin provided the U.S. with a local source of mercury. And mercury comes from this rock called cinnabar. So I'd like you to look at this rock and type in the chat what you notice about it. 
you think it's pretty? Do you think it's heavy? Maybe you can type in if you've seen this rock before. Just your observations. So this is Cinnabar. Um, the first inhabitants in Almonton Valley were the ancestors of the Muwekma Ohlone tribe, and they used this rock as a paint. They would crush it into small pieces. They would also use the rock as a valuable trading item. In 1845, Andres Castellero, who was a Mexican um, military captain who also studied metals, confirmed that the cinnabar here contained mercury. So how do you get mercury from cinnabar? What you do is you crush the rocks in very small pieces, then you heat that to high temperatures, and that releases the mercury and sulfur gas. So I've been talking about mercury a lot, but what exactly is mercury? So mercury is a silver white metal that is liquid at room temperature. It moves so quickly as a liquid, it became known as quicksilver. So quicksilver, also known as mercury, is used to make many different items like mirrors, car parts, and thermometers. And you may have seen older thermometers that have mercury in them. But mercury is also known for its amazing superpower to separate gold from rock in a process called amalgamation. You may have heard about the California Gold Rush or the Nevada Comstock Silver Boom. Maybe you're learning about it now in school. But both of these vents may not have been so successful without mercury. So the mercury from New Almaden was used to process gold and silver. That's because the mercury combined with the gold and silver, making it easier to extract for the miners. Both the California Gold Rush and the Nevada Comstock Silver Boom changed California and its people very dramatically. Um, like many mining operations, um, it attracts work for people from all over the world. And that was the case for New Almonden. So people from all over the world um, came here to work and they brought their families along. At its peak, uh, New Almonden was home to over 3,000 people. That's a lot of people in those hills. So work was, um, at first working communities were segregated, meaning that people had to live in different areas and worked different jobs uh, because of the race. Over time, however, as more people started to come to New Almonden, communities did intermix. The diversity of people in New Almonden, with people coming from Mexico, Spain, Chile, China, contributed to the diversity we have in the San Francisco Bay. Because as mining operations slow down, all those families will move out around the Bay Area. So mercury started to slow down in the early 1900s. And by 1912, the mining company went bankrupt as cyanide replaced mercury for processing precious metals. And cyanide is a very um, powerful and poisonous chemical. So as mining companies left, they also left behind a scar landscape. They left behind buildings and they left behind these tailing piles that you can see in the middle picture and that's mine waste. Then starting in 1973, uh, the county of Santa Clara began purchasing land to create a county park. But before a park could open, there was a lot of cleaning up to do. So county parks spent many years reclaiming the land. They had to clean up mining waste, they had to cap mine entrances, and they had to plant vegetation like trees and shrubs. And we continue to do restoration because mercury remains in some of the rocks. Mercury is very toxic to both wildlife and humans, and it can be washed into local streams and lakes when it rains, and it contaminates the water and makes the fish unsafe to eat. But we do a lot to make sure that toxic mercury doesn't affect our wildlife and our land. If you visit Almaden Quicksilver County Park, you can see some of the remains of buildings from the mining community throughout the park. You can also see really cool historic structures um, like this. This is a granite slab. And this granite slab was used in real mining competitions. So miners were timed and they had to drill as far as they can into this granite slab. Kind of similar to our cookie mining competition, but it probably took more effort and skill. So you can see historic fe historical features like this when you visit the park and you can enjoy 37 miles of hiking trails. 
So the Almondin Quicksilver County Park is just one great example of how we can restore land and enjoy it even after mining. So now I will pass it over to Victoria. So before we find out the results of our cooking mining competition, I know I'm rooting for Vic. I don't know who's going to win, but uh, before we get into those results, what we're going to do right now really quickly is we're going to launch another poll. And so this is just a really quick um, two question poll that helps us to um, kind of get an idea of attendance of who is um, here today and uh, just helps us plan for future programs. So I'm going to launch that poll now and it should be popping up on your screen. Um, you have to scroll down in order to get to the done button. Um, so just make sure that you answer both of those questions for us. Uh, we're only going to have it up for about 30 seconds. It just, yeah, thanks so much. The tricky thing about Zoom programs is you can have a bunch of people tuning in together and you, you don't really know who's there because you can't see them, especially when we're in that webinar mode. So I'll give it just a couple more seconds. Thank you so much for helping us with this poll. It, it means a lot and it helps us to plan for future programs. All right. I'm going to close that poll. There's a couple more people I'm waiting on. If you're watching this from a web browser, uh, the poll will not um, come up for you. So if you just don't see the poll, that's totally fine. Uh, no worries there. All right, I'm going to end the poll now. Thanks again for filling that out for us. Um, those results are just for us, so I'm not going to be sharing those results. All right, I'm going to pass it back over to Linda, and she is going to explain to us who won that competition and how they won and if it was close or not. So Linda, I'm passing it back to you. Okay, can you see me people? It says I'm sharing my video, but I don't see me. All right, hold on, there I am. Don't you love the whole new Zoom? All right, so the results are in. If you are playing along at home in your chocolate chip cookie mining activity sheet, I have to tell you that there is one error in that sheet if you've downloaded, downloaded it already. And that is on number step number 12, you need to subtract your total from your reclamation costs. So instead of subtracting line eight from nine, you have to subtract not 11, line 11 from nine. We fixed it on the latest update at the website. So if you wanna just re-download that page, you can do that too. But on to our results. After purchasing land and tools, Vic was left with $5 from her original $20. With chocolate chips being worth $3 a piece, Vic needed to mine at least six chocolate chips and not pay too much to have to restore the land to make a profit. Vic needed to mine very carefully. And she did, she mined six chips exactly, which earned her a total of $18 in chocolate chips. And she was a very careful miner, I have to say. She only had to pay half a dollar in reclamation costs. So after you total up all of her, um, all the things she had to pay for and all the things that she earned, she is left with $22.50. Now, Ray also started with her $20. And after purchasing her land and tools, she was left with $7. So she started with a little bit more money, which meant she didn't have to be such a careful miner. But she did need five chips to mine. And Ray actually mined seven chips. Now they're worth $3 a piece. So she earned $21 in chips. Bit more than Vic did, 21 versus 18. But was she a careful enough miner? We saw that big pile of chocolate chip cookie crumbs. While they probably were delicious, 
they're going to cost a bit to reclaim and get back to. So her reclamation costs were $6. When you subtract her costs from what she earned, it's $22. Therefore, Vic is our winner. Vic the veteran is our winner by a half a dollar. <laughs> Vic earned 22 and Ray earned 22. No, 22 and a half to 22. So the winner of the Great Chocolate Chip Mining Competition is Vic. She will receive the $1,000 prize in cookie money. Enjoy your trip to the Macaroon Islands, Vic. I know I will. I've been looking forward to it my whole life. I think you're on mute again, Rachel. So as soon as we get Rachel back on the other end, hopefully her sound will be working soon. She'll be able to let us know what that code word is. So hopefully Rachel can figure out her sound soon. How's everyone in the chat feeling? Do they think that I was gonna win against Ray? What do you think? I got a little distracted at the end when I found out that you couldn't see us and I wanted you to be able to see the whole competition, so. Congratulations. Are you back with us, Ray? Yes. I hope so, okay, awesome. Okay, so congratulations again to Vic and thank you for joining us for the great chocolate chip cookie mining competition. As a reminder, there is a code word that you need to write down in your activity booklet. And the code word for this program is, drum roll please, it is mining. So make sure you write that word down in your activity booklet. Once you complete the booklet and you write down one more code word, you can win a prize and you can receive your prize in the mail by going to the Almond Inn Quicksilver Mining Museum webpage again, and then you'll see the submission form at the bottom here. So once you fill that out, we will send all your prizes to you. And Victoria will, oh, so now I will ask any questions that you have during our program. Um, I won't be able to see the chat or the Q&A, so Victoria and Linda will help um, say any questions that we had. And no one put any questions in the, in the question box while we were doing the presentation, but if anyone has a question now, please type it into either the chat or the question box. We have both of them open, so we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the competition, about county parks, about mercury mining and processing. Or if you have any questions about the activities and the activity booklet, this would be a good time to ask them. Ah, okay. Are there any more videos next time? This will be our last video for the Play Like a Minor video series. But there are two pre-recorded videos that you can watch on our website. And that is uh, Life as a Minor, where we encourage you to make your own blanket tunnel and Eat Like a Minor, where Rachel takes you through a demonstration of making a Cornish pasty. They look delicious. Everything we do here at Cookie Valley is delicious. All right, what happens if you use different kinds of cookies? Mm. That's a good question. I think that will change how much, um, well, how many tools you might need. Um, in our Cookie Valley, we have harder chips that are sort of easier to get the chocolate chips out of. Um, if you use chewy chocolate chips, you're kind of scraping the chips and it's hard to get. And I think if you use larger cookies, then you might um, need more time or you might go over the time. So we use just small cookies like this for our competition. 
We also chose to use Chip Ahoy cookies for both of them so that they had kind of a uniform um, cookie to mine. It would have been a lot different if someone had mined a homemade cookie and someone else had mined a, a Pepperidge Farm giant cookie. We would have had much different results. All right, can we find mercury in Almaden Park this these days? Oh. No. Well, I don't well, think it's something you should look for, but you can learn a lot about <laughs> mercury when you visit the park. There are still, we're still doing reclamation in the park. Um, it's nowhere that the visiting public can access at this point. We have done millions of dollars of reclamation costs. Um, just kind of like in our competition, the cost of restoring land after you mine it is sometimes more costly than the profits that the company made in the first place. Um, so I can truly appreciate Vic's determination to be very careful with the mining that Vic did. Um, it really helps much a lot down the road. All right, um, what were we mining? Uh, do you mean what were we mining in the competition or what were we mining in the park? Maybe they meant the park. Um, we mined for cinnabar in the park and we processed that into mercury. And we have other videos that um, we'll introduce you to uh, after this question and answer session. So you can learn more about the cinnabar and mercury mining that happened at New, Al New Almaden. And do we have any records of who competed in the New Almaden mining competitions and who won? I don't know of any records. I've definitely looked for them and I'd love to, to find them, but until someone you know one of our volunteers who helps us with archives or maybe someone donate something new to our archives people are always uh coming out of nowhere with you know information from relatives who maybe lived up in spanish town or english camp so there's always more to learn um and there's always still going to be some mystery too we don't have perfect rec records of everything so i'd love to see some of those records um it might be worth also looking statewide because I know that for those types of mining competitions, they would actually compare the results um, with like statewide. So the reason why they used that granite slab was because it was like a reliable thing that would be the same no matter who you were, where you were. So they could measure how long it took for you and how deep you were able to drill into it. And then you can compare it with other miners throughout the state. So I'm wondering like if maybe there was like records that were shared across the state that we could find miners from New Almada and maybe on those leaderboards or something. That would be a really cool project. Um, we don't mm -hmm. have that information right now. No. Um, how did the miners' kids help them? Did the miners' kids help them? I know that some young kids actually did help in the mines, um, especially uh, with um, picking through the ore dumps. Were, did they help in other ways, Victoria? Picking in the ore dumps is the first thing that comes to mind, but I bet there were other jobs where you needed someone small to squeeze into a really tight spot to fix something or get something that maybe fell. Uh, you know, just like today, you have a small person go somewhere. So uh, they maybe not were on, they weren't on the payroll, but they were probably helping sometimes. Yes. And how valuable is mercury? Did you guys hear that question? I did. I was. I didn't know if Rachel was gonna chime in on that at all. Oh, nope, I think she's muted again. Every time she switches their screen view, she something happens with her sound. Cookie Valley has its own particular problems. Um, you want to answer that, Victoria? Yeah, so the price of mercury changed over time based on a lot of different factors. It changed based on how much mercury was available because of other mines that were producing mercury, um, how much was needed, 
there were monopolies that would control the amount of mercury that was put on the, the market so they could control the price and like raise it and lower it depending on, on what was going on in the world. Um, it, so the, the amount per flask and they measured it in flasks. So a flask was 76 pounds of mercury. Um, so the price of those flasks like could be like $50 a flask upwards of a couple hundred dollars. And that price obviously over time with inflation kind of went up. So I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head how much a flask of mercury would be worth today, but it would be worth a lot more today. And do you know, do you, can you think of specifics on that? Um, it's probably more valuable because it's there, there's not a big supply of it, but there's not a lot of demand for it either. So um, just like we were saying, cyanide, um, was a cheaper way to process um, gold and silver. And it mostly because it didn't take as much infrastructure for mining and it didn't um, require um, as big a labor force. So cyanide was actually a much cheaper um, way to process gold and silver. So mercury's value has gone down considerably in today's modern world. Um, did Vic and Ray eat their leftover cookies? I nibbled on a couple of my chips that I popped out. They're pretty tasty. <laughs> I practiced earlier and I definitely ate that cookie. <laughs> That's the advantage of, of uh, working in Cookie Valley. You get to eat what you mine. <laughs> All right. Um, another question is, what is code word number one? Well, you will have to watch either life as a miner or eat like a miner to get our other code words. Uh, the, if you missed today's code word for this video, it was mining. And, in, oh, in this competition, what were we mining? We were mining chocolate chips out of chocolate chip cookie mountains. All right. And how long do you have to get the code? So how the, the you can have a while uh, to get your code words and submit them into the form. We'll keep that open for quite some time. I don't know when we'll take it down. So the two uh, videos, Eat Like a Miner and Live Like a Miner, they uh, are up. You can watch them at any time. And um, then you can submit those code words into the registration form at any time as well. And then we will be happy to mail you. And if you're wondering what the prize is, I would also encourage you to watch either of those videos. Rachel shows you what the prize is in the videos. We did have uh, one other question that just came in. Um, is cyanide cheaper than mercury right now? Mm -hmm. Rachel, do you wanna take a stab at that one or? I'm not sure about that one. So the reason why cyanide took over for, for mercury, uh, one of the reasons was because it didn't require the, the workforce and the infrastructure. So um, like ounce for ounce compared to mercury, I'm not really sure off the top of my head, but as far as uh, the price for extracting gold or silver or precious metals using cyanide, is way cheaper from a, a workforce uh, infrastructure standpoint. So that's why it went out over the mercury. Linda, are you looking it up? No? No. Okay. I was just answering um, a couple other messages. So I have some questions about why can't uh, people talk in the meeting and that's because we're doing this in webinar mode. So in webinar mode, everybody else's mics is muted. Um, but that's why we're as asking you to put questions in the chat or the question and answer box. So we'll, if there's any last uh, questions, we'll take a last couple questions and then we will work on our conclusion. All right.
right. With that, I think we'll turn it back over to Rachel. Oh, this is me. Uh, so oh, okay. we hope that you had fun today learning about a little bit about New Almaden and having watching us interpreters uh, mine for chocolate chips. Uh, I see a couple more questions. We'll answer those in a bit. But first, I wanted to, to just let you all know that we have a bunch of really fun programs coming up. We have in the month of November, we have Parks Trivia Night. We have Bats Superheroes of Night. That's a program that I'll be doing um, in the middle of the month. We have a Turkey Vulture program, which also looks like it's going to be really fun. So make sure that you check out our website, parkhere.org, for all of our upcoming programs. We have new programs every month. They're all free. Um, right now, they're all virtual. So they're usually in the Zoom format. Sometimes they're in meeting mode where you can see other participants. Sometimes they're in webinar mode. It just depends on, on the event. Um, but they're all free. And then in addition to that, we have our Facebook page and our YouTube page where we post our videos. Um, so if you're interested in watching a video just on your own time, we have videos on a number of different subjects that you can watch. And so um, in the bottom there, you can see our, our playlist, Mercury Minutes and Play Like a Minor. So that's where you'll be able to watch the other two Play Like a Minor videos. Um, this is on our YouTube channel, but they are also on Facebook. Um, and then in addition to that, we have a whole series called Mercury Minutes that's taking a deeper dive into the history of New Almaden. So if you're interested in learning about the people that uh, lived and worked in New Almaden, uh, why, what was mercury for? Why was it important? Um, who got rich off of mercury? The environmental impact. And then uh, the last video of the series will be more of like a virtual tour where uh, you'll get to see a bunch of different mining remnants that are still there in the park. Um, so make sure to check those videos out. We still have two left. We'll have one next week and then the last one the week after that. So they premiere on Thursdays. So keep an eye out for those and then keep an eye out on our uh, park website, parkhere.org for all of our upcoming programs uh, into the future. And then Rachel, I don't know if you wanna say some last final words, uh, maybe answer these, these other two questions that came in. So the last two questions are, how big is the new Almaden mine? Uh, that's relative. Like, do you mean how many acres? How many miles of tunnel? How much profit did they make off of the mine? There's a lot of different answers we can give you. We know that there's 37 miles of trails in, new, in Almaden Count, Quicksilver County Park today. There's over 50 miles of tunnels within those hills. They're all closed off. And how many acres are in Almond and Quicksilver Park? Uh, 4,157. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to quantify, um, you know, the, I think the land that the mind owned just because, you know, it's underground and the tunnels are going which way. So like the way that land was surveyed, like it's hard to, decide who owns what when you get underground. Things get really tricky. So um, Almond and Quicksilver County Park, that's 4,000 plus acres today. A large portion of that was a part of the, the Quicksilver Mining Company. So 50 miles of tunnels, 37 miles of trails today, 4,000 acres. Gets you in the ballpark of how big the mining operation was. Are there any mines open to the public today? No, all of our mine tunnels are closed off to the public for the public safety. Um, yeah, many of those tunnels and shafts have filled with water over the years. Um, carbon dioxide gases would be another danger in the mines. Um, so they're all closed off at this point. Uh, how many seven-year-old twins worked in the mines? <laughs> um, not, don't, don't know how many twins were working in the mines. We don't have that information and how many of them were seven years old. Um, probably not a lot of seven-year-olds. The people living on the hill, they did have schools. So there was um, a school in Spanish town, there was a school in English camp and there was a school down at the bottom of the hill at the Hacienda. So probably most seven-year-olds were probably in school. And what makes cinnabar red? Hmm. 
a good question. Probably the um, the minerals in in combination together. We will have to ask our local volunteer geologist, Mike Cox. Yeah, that is definitely more kind of a chemistry question because there can be cinnabar that's uh, that can be black sometimes, um, but I don't completely understand that process. I know I've learned a little bit about it before, but I'm rusty on it, so I don't want to give an incorrect answer. All right, I think we are we're done with questions. Oh, Rachel, you're muted again. <laughs> How about now? There you go. Okay, <laughs> let me try that again. Uh, thank you everyone for your questions and thank you again for joining us for the great chocolate chip cookie mining competition. I hope you learned more about the importance of mining and you learn more about the Almaden Quicksilver County Park. If you'd like to visit the park in person, make sure you visit the Santa Clara County Parks website to check trails and conditions. And again, we want to thank you again for joining us. And we hope you have a good evening and take care. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, the answer to the last question, who owns the mine? The mine is no longer, the, the land now belongs to all of us taxpayers and it's uh, stewarded by Santa Clara County Parks. So please come join us. Bye everyone, have a good day. Goodbye everyone. Thank you.